Shikaka. I mean, Asika. This is the SRM Asika, and this is what we're going to look at this morning. This knife's a lot of fun. We'll get into the good, the bad, and the things that I found in the couple weeks that I've had it here and carried it. So you guys take a look at the logo, and then let's crack into this. Like I said, this is the SRM Asika. This thing is a very interesting knife. Got a lot of bells and whistles. Before we get too far into it, let's look at some size comparison. Your first knife is going to be the Wii Knife Company 601, which is a great, great knife, discontinued model. We're going to have a video coming up soon of knives you can no longer get. So you can see the Wii 601, fairly good sized knife, is a little bit smaller than this one. So your next knife is going to be... The Migron Valona, which is nine inches overall, so you have a really good size comparison. These are really close. This is just about nine inches uh, overall on this knife, just real close. Uh, your next knife's gonna be, damn it, PDM. PDM keeps getting in the shop doing stuff. Um, so your final comparison is going to be the Chris Reeves Sabenza, which is a good size overall knife. It's not real big. It's kind of a mid-sized knife. You can see that this knife's a good bit bigger than that. So let's get this out of the way and start talking about the knife. Guys, I hate to interrupt the video because I know we're having fun, but I do have to do the YouTuber thing and remind you that this channel is self-sponsored with all the affiliate links and stuff you see down below. Anything from knives, tools, EDC gear, and uh, Blade HQ, anything, all the Amazon links, they all support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Now let's go back to the knives. So like I said, this is the SRM Asika, which came in from Jared over at Neves Knives. There's a spec sheet over here. I meant to say that earlier, but we'll put it here. Um, yeah, so this came in, it's done in a really good titanium finish. Uh, it's bead blasted titanium. It looks like glass bead blast, very, very fine. Um, titanium 154 cm blade that is done in a more almost a, like a combination almost a japanese style tanto but not quite it's still got that americanized secondary point that you don't get a, a true japanese tanto would have to flatten and it would come down but there would be a thickening of it here um done in a frame lock the action on this is really smooth just shy of drop shut just a little jiggle um i actually don't care whether a knife is drop shut or not uh drop shut can be problematic on some knives this one you don't have to worry about it but the action is still really good nice and smooth srm is a company that i had not seen before apparently it's been around for a while I'm not even going to try and pronounce what the their actual name. Some people were telling me that they've been involved with OEM for a lot of other companies. Uh, if you're coming, you know, just judging by this, I would say that's probably correct because it's been machined really, really well in hand. Really comfortable. It it feels good in hand. We'll talk about some other points uh, about it when we get to the bad stuff. Uh, like I said, overall auction is really good. This thing cuts really really well because it is a broad blade that comes down relatively thin and it came really sharp i didn't really do anything except strop this um i had noticed when i first got it, it didn't feel like it was going to cut real well 154 cm strops up pretty easily so you've got that going for it i just simply stropped it on a leather strop um, on the raw leather side not the loaded side of my strop so it came right back up screaming sharp i cut up a bunch of cardboard with it finish has held up really well um this you can see there's some minor scratches go in different directions in a couple places if the light will catch it but at any rate it came finished really well uh on something like this if i was going to use it as a big cutter i would probably stonewash this because it hides scratches a little bit better not that aesthetics matter but you know it is one of those things if you like your knives you want them to stay nice a a good stone wash will hide scratches for a long time. Um, like I said, 154 cm, that's your model number and everything. This is a made in China knife. Uh, it's not a US made product, just to get that out of the way. But other things it's got going for it. So it is a very attractive shape and handle very, uh, it looks like a shark to tell you the truth. That's what I get out of it, it looks like a shark. Um, they've done pivot collars, but not just pivot collars. They've done hardware collars all the way around on all of the screws, except for the one for the lock bar insert. Um, and that gives it a really unique look. I like that. I've always been a fan of colored pivot collars and the fact that they did it on all the hardware just gives it another little pop. I like the fact that they didn't go with a lanyard hole. They went ahead and put one in the backspacer. So it's not as bad. Uh, like I said, if I owned this, I think I said this in the previous video, I would probably just grind this off 
uh, and then just be a little low spot there. I just line that up and just grind it off and, and then blast it. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not unattractive, but still, I'm not such a big fan of it. I don't use lanyards, so I probably take it off, but it's not a hot spot at all. Pocket clip is not a hot spot. I'm not such a fan typically of deeper carry pocket clips, uh, but this one's done really well, sits in hand really well, and it carries well. This has just got just about the right amount of tension on it. Uh, the in and out of pocket is not a problem. As far as cutting, it lines up in the cut really well, and you can get in because you have that forward point. You can use this rounded area and push in on things and do some rocking cuts. It's like having two knives. It's like having a nice straight Warrencliffe, but then uh, like a drop point with a belly. So you can do a lot of different things. I like having a lot of flat on a knife. Uh, it lets you get in and cut and maintain that you know, maintain that angle better before it slips off. But if you do need to do some stuff where you're like cutting around stuff, you've got that nice rounded forward edge. That's one of the problems I have with a typical Americanized Tonto is it's it's straight and straight. I, I like this combination where you basically have a nice straight and then a nice curve. Uh, swedges on it, give it a very attractive look. And uh, like I said, in pocket, it's great. Nice and slim. If you're into a slim knife, this is something that you would enjoy. Uh, I don't get any real hot spots, like I said on this, uh, anywhere. So I've carried it for about two weeks. And so it's it's been in and out of pocket a lot. And I do like the fact <clears throat> that you do have this big blade. I carry a lot of smaller knives these days, but it has it is nice to get a larger knife in, throw it in your pocket and carry it especially if it's one that doesn't feel awkward. And this does not. This feels very comfortable in hand. It's pretty nimble. It's nice and light. Um, there is no weight reduction in these scales for as light as this is. It is not heavy. You saw the spec sheet. It's not a real heavy knife. So yeah. Now let's go ahead and we'll get into the bad. The th there's only a couple things I've really noticed that are bad about this knife. So let's go ahead and get into those. Let's go ahead and get into the couple bad things that I did notice. Um, the jimping on this, it is just there for looks. It is not functional. It's just, it's really slick. Um, there's a couple types of jimping that I like. I don't like jimping for show. I don't like the way it looks, but if you're gonna do it, it should be functional. A couple examples of really functional jimping. This tight, sharp jimping you get on a Sabenza. It's not overly sharp and it lets you know that it's there. It's just about the right amount. And the other type I like is like the ones that Firm Forge typically does, which are these deep ones that are sharp, but there is no chance you're gonna come up and over. I don't like the way jimping typically looks. It has to serve a purpose and function, and this does not. Uh, it's just simply there. It could have just made that slick, and I think it would have looked much better because jimping's ugly. It really is. I don't find it attractive. Um, other things that I really don't like about it, I wish that this was a little bit bigger so that I had a full forward finger choil. If that was just ever so slightly bigger, that opening, you would have a full forward finger choil and you get up on it. It's not bad. I can get in, up, up in on it and pinch it there and not really be in danger of cutting myself, but I would much rather, I love forward finger choils. And that's just a me thing. That's, that's not a knock against the knife because it's perfectly functional this way. Um, the pocket clip, it's it's out of it's out of and this is just an aesthetic thing like i said the pocket clip on it is actually really comfortable really functional it's just about the perfect amount of tension but when you look at it with the rest of the knife it's just kind of out of it's out of place it doesn't match the overall aesthetic of the knife in my opinion but they did do a good job there is no real movement on this pocket clip it's in there nice and deep if they made that solid there i don't think it would have any play at all um, that's one of those things like there's there's better ways to do it. They could have blind. They could have screwed it in from the backside, uh, things like that, and then you wouldn't have that hole there. Um, the lock bar access is a little tight. If you look there, you don't have a lot of room because they did not lower one side or raise the other. I should say, um, it, it's it's kind of tight. It's not it's not difficult. I'm just saying I personally like to have a little bit more space in there. There's a handful of knives I really like that are like this. The uh, the Great White from Artisan, the Gavco design. It's a lot like that. Um, but it's just one of those things where like if you've got big hands, especially on a thin knife, this knife's already pretty skinny. Um, and then once that lock bar kicks over, because you're looking at about 50% on lockup on that, it makes it tight. 
it makes it tight in there to get your finger in. If they had just like lowered one side a little bit, you really wouldn't feel it in hand, but you'd be able to access that lock bar so much better if they had just done that. Um, last couple little things. I There's this blade with that extra point right there, they could easily, you could have just sharpened that over. There's a lot of companies do that. If this was my knife, I would have sharpened that over. And the reason being is this isn't a true Tonto. And you can see it here. It gets, there's some inconsistencies in grind. Uh, if I was gonna own this knife, I would just sharpen it off because I'm trying to find it. Can you see right there? There's a little spot. When you have that extra point there, it, it it gets so much extra pressure on it, that's gonna be the first part that goes dull. And it actually has got a spot where that edge on that very tip, if I can find it and show it to you, you'll see a little glean. See how it's got that little sh that little spot right at the very front of it? The tip, the tip of that's rolled, uh, the tip of that secondary point. Uh, some knives do it really well. We just did a knife uh, that, that TS-175. It has a thicker spot. If you had a, a, a true Tonto, uh, where you had a thick spot here with the two grinds combined uh, on the blade, you would have a much more reinforced point there, but you don't. So it winds up being the thinnest point of the knife, the knife that takes the most, there it is. There it is, you can see it right there. It takes the most pressure. That's what's gonna hit everything. And so it does have a tendency to get dull there. If this was my knife, I would sharpen that little point out uh, just right there. This would still be straight. This would still be curved. You just wouldn't have that point anymore. Um, I've done that on some other knives, but all in all, really good knife. It has cut really well, um, nice and thin, carries well, all the good points that you want in a knife. Uh, just only a couple of bad things. So yeah, let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and get this turned around. We'll do some final thoughts and I'll send you out about your day. But like I said, not much bad about this. It, it, the only thing about the pocket clip, which typically is a point of contention with me, is just that it doesn't look, it doesn't match the overall feel of the rest of the knife, in my opinion. So there you go. Let's turn this around. So there you go, guys. Pretty good middle-of-the-road knife. It's not great, and it's not horrible. It's just an all-around good knife at the price of $114. It's not too bad. Uh, you're getting good quality materials, good finish, and uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles on that. So nothing that I'm over the moon with, but also nothing that I'd say, eh, I wouldn't get it. Um, so... Yeah, guys, that's it on this one. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change that content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's simple as like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you got notifications set to all. And if you've got notifications set to all, make sure you got notifications for YouTube turned on your device or you still won't get notified. Your phone won't tell you if you tell it not to. Other ways you can support the channel if you want to do it financially, I have got a ton of affiliate links down below. Anything you purchase with the affiliate links, I get credit for it. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout, and I have like four affiliate links that actually save you money. Doll Strong Knives, there's a 10% discount associated with my link. Coffee Brand Coffee, there's a 5%. Atlas VPN right now is running a promotion where if you use my affiliate, you get like 80% off. Uh, it's like $44 for two years. Um, and uh, Airfare Consolidator can save you 3% on domestic air travel in the United States. All of the affiliates down below are either something I have personally used or checked all the reviews of. Doll Strong Knives, I've got their knives, i got their stones. Atlas VPN is the VPN I use, and I drink the coffee brand coffee all the time. The only one down there that I really haven't used is Airfare Consolidator. Um, other ways you can do it, I have got a membership down below. Everyone has access to my Gilded server. Baseline and premium tier members are entered into a monthly giveaway that I do on the Gilded server. Premium tier members have access to a sharpening tutorial series I have built here on YouTube for them specifically. And the final way is I have a merchandise store where I have got uh, on Ember Shirt Co. where I've got a coupon code that's shut up, set up for 10% off that works on anyone's merchandise on Ember Shirt Co., not just mine. So save you 10% on shirts and their shirts are some of the best ones out there. Their blanks are super, super comfortable shirts. Um, guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.